Michelle, you doing prayer? We'd like to call our regular scheduled April 18th council meeting to order. Please rise for the invocation. Let us bow our heads and remember we're in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this evening, we thank you for this opportunity to serve our community. We ask you for your blessing upon this meeting that uh, you be with us in making wise decisions that affect uh, all the citizens of Kenner. We want to pray in a special way for two Kenner families tonight. Uh, Ms. Brenda Sheramy, a member of Westminster Towers who passed away. And for all of our friends, Mr. Johnny Trout, who we lost this week. Um, we thank you for their lives and we celebrate their lives, but uh, we grieve their loss and we hope that you'll be with their family, bless their families as they grieve their loss as well. But our hearts are heavy um, for, the, for the rest of the world, Lord, and we, we ask that you be with, first of all, the citizens of West Texas um, with the tragedy that happened there. And of course, in all of our hearts is the, the tragedy in Boston that, that you be with all those families, all those victims, and with all of us as we grieve the loss of, of just our safety, um, our security, and we ask that you help us to uh, be cognizant of, of the liberties that, you, that we take for granted so often. Uh, but we ask in a special way that you be with those victims and their families. We also want to pray in a special way for all of the, the decisions we'll make here this evening. There are so many things that affect our citizens and none more than their quality of life. And so we ask that you, you bless us with the wisdom. And all, for all of these things, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Councilman Dinopolis, I think you have a special intention. Um. I also would like to pray for the Liljenberg family. Mr. John Liljenberg passed away um, late last week. Um, and for all you to know, uh, Mr. John Liljenberg and his family and his brother Bobby and Sammy, it goes out to their family. They actually brought the hospital to Kenner. Um, that's how long ago Mr. John Liljenberg has been part of this community. And my, our hearts and our prayers go out to him and his family. Thank you. Thank you. We ask these in your name, Son Jesus' name, amen. amen. Councilman Reno, would you lead us in the, a pledge? Madam Chairman, you have a quorum this evening. In accordance with Council Resolution Number B14550, please be advised that our cellular telephones, pagers, beepers, and other devices of this nature must be deactivated or silenced throughout the Council meeting. <clears throat> Madam Chairman, this evening we received a request to um, change the order of business to take Item 18A at the beginning of the meeting. Motion by Councilman Stagney, second by Councilwoman Brannigan to change the order of business to hear item number 18A, which is on the agenda. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 18A, at the request of Councilmember Stagney, a discussion regarding the Crescent City Connection tolls. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, November of last year, we had uh, one of the closest elections in this region and state's history with about 308,000 votes cast. And I think there were, it was less than a 10 vote difference, maybe eight votes regarding uh, the Crescent City tolls. And I've asked someone to come here, come on up, and talk a little bit about the tolls. I, I would say on a weekly basis, I get questions from constituents, business owners, uh, regarding information on the tolls, and there's some misinformation out there. So I'd like to uh, go ahead and have, state your name and address, and then give us a little synopsis of uh, what has happened thus far and what you'd like to talk to us about. Okay. Uh, my name is Mike Teachworth. Um, I live at 3809 Lake Desalmonds Drive in Harvey, Louisiana. 
Um, I did grow up um, in the Kenner area before I married my wife, who was from the West Bank, so I um, feel a little bit at home back over here. So, um, Just to give everyone a quick overview, um, Mr. Stagney gave a pretty good overview. Um, it was a very close election in uh, November to extend the tolls for another 20 years. Um, one thing I'd like to tell everybody and put out um, is that this toll um, is essentially um, a bridge tax. And it's a tax that only the people of our region pay. There's 10 other bridges in the state of Louisiana, and every single one of them is paid for in full by the state. The state patrols them, they maintain them, they cut the grass, they do everything on these other bridges except for the Crescent City Connection. Crescent City Connection has had tolls for 24 years, um, originally for construction bonds, which were paid off in 1998. Mm -hmm. um, it essentially takes $400 million out of our area, and now what's up, this coming up May 4th, is to a proposition to extend the tolls for another 20 years. And again, we oppose that, that tax on our area. All right. And, you want to and the, the, the bridge, it's paid off, isn't it? That's correct. And, and everybody is already paying a tax for the maintenance of that bridge and every other bridge in the state. Isn't that true? That's correct. Um, every gallon of gas that's purchased in Louisiana has a 20 cent transportation trust fund tax on it, which goes to the Department of Transportation and Development. They receive about $3 billion a year um, in total from this tax and from federal funds. So we're already paying the tax in terms of a gas tax um, and so the bridge, we believe, toll, it's a bridge tax, so it's double taxation in our opinion. And, and you said earlier, we have 10 bridges. This is the only one that they had some type of extra tax on, and it almost can be considered a double tax. Is that correct? It is. We, we believe it's a double tax. It, and in fact, we have one of the studies that we've done, about $5 million per year alone just in traveling the span of the greater, uh, excuse me, of the Crescent City Connection is paid in gas taxes. So a substantial amount of money just from the gas tax alone comes in from that bridge. And you couldn't even consider this a, a user tax because only 19 cents for every dollar goes towards that bridge. That's correct. The that's other 81 cents is spent somewhere else in the state. And that's been one of the big problems that we've had with the bridge is that of the 450 million that was taken from the area, and it's even less than 19 cents now because this, you don't have to pay for the state police, um, and the ferries are removed from the from the proposition. Okay, tell us what, how did this come back on the ballot? What happened? Um, it was a very close election um, the first time, um, and one of the things that happened because it was a uh, federal election, um, there's a, a National Voter Registration Act that if you show up to vote into a, in a precinct and your name's not in the precinct register, they still can't deny you the right to vote in a federal election, so they give you what's called a, a provisional ballot. But the provisional ballot only contains the federal electors in it. And so what happened in the, in the November 6th election, um, a lot of people showed up to vote across Jefferson, Orleans, and Plaquemines, and they said, hey, I'm in my precinct and I'm ready to vote. People said, the, the commissioner said, you're not in the book. And so you have to vote on a provisional ballot, which stopped them from voting on the tolls. And it turns out that about 1,500 of the people were actually in the book, and their names were present in the register. Hmm. The tolls were taken off because you all won the lawsuit. They haven't collected tolls. How much money has that put back in our economy? Um, probably close to $3 million has stayed in the pockets of citizens where we believe it belongs. And there's no toll on the Huey P. Long Bridge that, that was paid for as well? No toll on the Huey P. Long, there's no toll on the Sunshine Bridge, there's no toll John James Ottoman Bridge, there's no toll um, on the Destraham, there's, there's every, every other Mississippi River bridge. In fact, the, G the Crescent City Connection is the only bridge in the United States across the Mississippi River that has a toll. Okay. Madam President, I'll, if anybody else has any questions, I'll, I'll would, wait to close. I would like to, I, I would Thank like you. to, first, first of all, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name the first time. It's a Michael Teachworth. Thank you, Mr. Teachworth, for coming. I will say that it's highly unusual 
for the, what, a councilman to put an issue that is going to be voted upon and to take sides in, in regards to an issue that is coming up before the, every, every citizen in Jefferson Parish. And it is unfair for us to just let one side of the issue uh, be brought to the attention of, the, of our listening audiences. So I am going to have to uh, thank you for coming, but we, do, we will give equal time to anyone else, one person, to come up and speak for, because we do not make recommendations on, on doing a public council meeting of something that is going to be on the ballot. So I would appreciate you coming up and giving your side of the story, but I think it's only fair to, uh, to the rest of the citizens of our parish uh, and um, to, to be able to give it, be given the same opportunity. Thank you very much. I agree 100% that people should hear both sides. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Teacher. Thank you. Mr. Stagney, did you wish to close? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. I don't, I don't think at any time I told or did this gentleman tell someone how to vote. The information that was brought out was factual information, uh, and anybody can come up and speak on the item if they'd like to. And it's not the first time that before this council we've had uh, people come up and speak on propositions or other matters that are before the voters. Uh, now, I will tell you my personal view is that the tax is unfair because it only affects one bridge. It's unnecessary uh, because the bridge is paid for, and now it's a new tax because you haven't had to pay the tax. That is on the ballot in, uh, in May. There are two other tax issues that are just renewals, which are necessary. One's a school board tax for the operation of the school board, and the, uh, uh, the second one is a, uh, a Jefferson Parish tax for uh, maintenance of the water system here in our, in our city because it's provided by the parish and parish-wide. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, and we just urge everyone to go out and vote, but um, we're not we're not necessarily state. This is uh, your own point of view, and uh, my point of view, and everybody else's point of view is nobody wants to see extra taxes. But we also know that everybody deserves equal time, and that's the only thing reason I was saying it. Councilman Dinopoulos, did you wish to address the uh, matter? You have the floor. Your mic on? There you go. You're on now. Now I'm on. Actually, uh, I have to agree with Mr. Stagner. I don't think he came here actually persuading us how and why and to vote. I think it was mostly informational. And of course, you know, I, I, I would ask anybody who's that involved in any issues if they have information they need to bring and facts they need to bring to us here to council so that you know, we can decide how and where and, and why to vote. I, I, I really appreciate you coming and giving us that information. I mean, we're all taxpayers. We're all vested in what happens in this community. We're all taxpayers. And, um, you know, I, I can tell you that um, anytime anybody wants to bring information like that to this council, I mean, I, I, I applaud you to do it, and I'm glad you did the research on it, and it's very informational. It will definitely help me make my decision on it as well. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, believe me, I don't, do, I want everyone to come up. It's just unusual that we would put something like that on our agenda. Usually they come up and speak. So that's, that was my only point. So thank you, Madam President, Ma Madam Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I am talking to myself again. Madam Chairman, I, um, I have also received a request this evening to amend the agenda to include item 3C, which is application number 1749-13, Chilango's Restaurant, to hold a public gathering for a celebration on May 4th and 5th, 2013, from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. at 2723 Roosevelt Boulevard. Motion by Councilman Stagney, second by Councilman Brannigan, um, to include item th 3C on the public um, gathering for May 4th. Uh, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. I, I would entertain a motion now to um, amend the agenda. If no one in the audience objects to us adding the item, please. Thank you. Um, well said. <laughs> Um, motion by Councilman Stagney, second by Councilman Brannigan. 
Was there anyone in the audience who objected this, this being put on the agenda? Thank you. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. The consent agenda this evening, item motion. one is approval of minutes, the regular council meeting of April 4th, 2013. Item two is approval of alcohol beverage permit applications. Item 2A is a resolution granting an alcohol beverage permit to the Friends of Rivertown on May 3rd, 2013, May 10th, 2013, May 17th, 2013, and May 24th, 2013, and May 31st, 2013, at 303 Williams Boulevard, being property owned by the City of Kenner in Kenner, Louisiana. Item three is approval of bingo and public gathering applications. Item 3A is application number 1747-13, progressive health care providers to hold a public gathering for a picnic on April 26, 2013, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Lake Town. Item 3B is application number 1748-13, Annette Carter to hold a public gathering for a family reunion on June 16, 2013, from 2, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Veterans Park. Item 3C is application number 1749-13, Chilango's Restaurant to hold a public gathering for a celebration on May 4th and 5th, 2013, from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. at 2723 Roosevelt Boulevard. Item 4 is correspondence reports from the mayor, CAO, or department heads. We have none. Item 5 is acceptance re rejection of bids requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. Item 5A is a resolution accepting the quote received from ITA NOLA LLC, an authorized dealer in the amount of $4,592.13 to diagnose and repair Unit 2052 for the Public Works Department Division of Streets and Drainage. Item 6 is change orders requiring an expenditure of less than $5,000. We have none. Item 7 is acceptance of committee findings for final passage. We have none. Item 8 is resubdivision ordinances for final passage. We have none. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to approve the consent agenda. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Under the public appearance agenda this evening, we have item 9 for public hearings for final passage. Item 9 is 9A is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,511, <clears throat> an ordinance authorizing the borrowing of funds from the Louisiana Local Government Environmental Facilities and Community Development Authority, LCDA, to provide for refinancing by the LCDA of its outstanding revenue bonds, Kenner Road Project, Series 2003, prescribing the form, fixing the details, and providing for the payment thereof, entering into certain covenants and agreements in connection with the security and payment of said debt, authorizing and approving the execution of a loan agreement with LCDA, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Motion by Councilwoman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to open a public hearing. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. We are now in a public hearing to discuss summary ordinance number 11,511. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to come before us and speak, please come forward now and give your name and address. Motion to close the public hearing by Councilman Brannigan. Second. Excuse me. Yes, please. Former state representative in his white bucks and his summer suit, Mr. Tony Legey. Good evening, Madam President, members. My name is Tony Legi. I reside at 5216 CNAG Drive. And as I did at the last council meeting, I will disclose to you that I'm the executive director of the Jefferson Business Council, which supports this ordinance, as well as a member of the Jefferson Chamber, which likewise supports this ordinance. With those disclosures out of the way for the gratification of the opponents of the ordinance, I will further tell you that I'm a 30-year property owner in the city of Kenner and, a, of course, a taxpayer, and I once represented the interests of North Kenner citizens in our legislature. I have tremendous concern about the future of Kenner and the current condition it's in. I've watched my property values, the value of my largest investment, fall year after year. 
primarily due to the loss of population in Kenner, which has lowered demand for housing in the city. Kenner City government should not fiddle while Rome burns. This is a butt ugly city which needs extensive aesthetic improvements to allow it to be competitive in retaining existing residents and businesses and attracting new residents and businesses. With interest rates at historic lows, it's now the time to finance the improvements that are so badly needed. Make no mistake, Kenner is in competition for people to buy its housing stock with other areas and municipalities. Young professionals are flocking to Lakeview and bypassing Kenner. Baby boomers who own much of the wealth of this country and are approaching its retirement age are seeking places to locate. And Louisiana with its festivals, outdoor sporting opportunities, moderate in climate and ambiance should be a natural destination. Kenner must transform itself into an attractive place to live and now is that time to begin that transformation. I would respectfully ask this council to vote favorably on these ordinances and keep the process moving forward. Kenner needs to invest in itself or it just not, does not need to exist as, as a city. And I thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Legey. Is there anyone else? Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to close the public hearing. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to approve. Is anyone want to speak? Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Most Councilman Brannigan, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I would like the administration, we have two um, items up for public hearing and for adoption this evening, but there's a distinction between the two. So could we have uh, Mr. McConnell, if you'll tell us what the first one is that we're voting on and what it accomplishes? Yeah, the, the one before you is a refinancing of a LCDA loan. Um, that loan was done in 2003, matures in 2018. Um, on that one, we're looking to just refinance over the remaining five years that we have at a lower interest rate. Uh, the interest rate will go down from about four and a quarter to a little over 2%. Um, we're not looking to extend that one or get additional money. All we're doing is refinancing for the same five years, and that'll save the city about $60,000 a year over that remaining five years. Okay. Because um, I, I don't want to confuse it with the next one, which will extend our debt and, and speak to specific projects that would be important. So this one uh, seems to be a no-brainer and that we'll be refinancing, that it won't, uh, will save money uh, by doing so. We'll take advantage of the low interest rates that are out there and, and Kenner's excellent um, rating that uh, affords us the ability to, to borrow at that, that sum um, and just save a, the city $60,000 a year. This is Correct. not the ordinance which would extend our debt, which is Correct. W which we'll speak to next. That's the next one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Brannigan. Councilman Dinopoulos, you have the floor. Um, thank you, Ms. Brannigan, for um, clearing that up. And also, you know, likewise, this is, I mean, good management of money for the city. I mean, this is what the administration, this council is entailed to do uh, and entrusted to do. And once again, we're going to be saving some money. So obviously, this is a, this is a win situation for the the taxpayers and, and the homeowners here in Kenner, so I'll be voting for this. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman DeFranches. Thank you, Council President. And Ms. Brannigan used the exact word I used when I moved on the re resolution at the last council meeting. And it's interesting because I happened to be in the parking lot during the week and I ran into a, uh, one of Mr. Carroll's, Ray Carroll's constituents, who I happen to know from a long, long time ago at John Martin. and. Um, he was telling me that he and his wife had listened to the council meeting as well as his pastor, and, and they said, how could anyone be against doing that? It's, you use the word no-brainer, we're all starting to say this is a no-brainer, it's a win-win for the city, it's saving money, it doesn't extend the debt, and how could anyone be against it? So I hope everyone here understands that we're not extending the time, as Ms. Brannigan said, we're not, we're not uh, changing it in any way other than refinancing and saving $60,000 a year. And that's a win, win as, our, uh, as Councilman Dinopoulos said for everyone in the city of Kenner. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. This is a pure refinancing and it will save money. Uh, Mr. McConnell, what is our current interest rate on this? 
The current interest rate is 4.28 percent. Did we did we get a lock on the interest rate from our underwriters? Well, no. Mr. Once Becker? you approve this, then the underwriters go. It, and it's it's the hope that it's what. You yeah, gave they're, us they're estimating 2.02 percent okay. uh, would be the uh, new rate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, and, and basically, it's just simply think of it as you refinancing your home. Um, you're getting um, you're getting a more bang for your buck. You're saving two percent on your interest, and that's where the sixty thousand dollars comes in that we keep talking about and re pushing forward to make sure the voters know that we're saving we're saving them that much money. So, uh, hearing no other conversation, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes seven zero. Item nine B is a public hearing regarding summary ordinance number 11,512. An ordinance amending and supplementing ordinance number 5848 adopted on May 7, 1978 as amended and restated and readopted on July 7, 1994, the general bond ordinance providing for the issuance of sales tax bonds, series 2013, of the city of Kenner, state of Louisiana, pursuant to the general bond ordinance prescribing the form, fixing the details, and providing for the payment of principal of and interest on such bonds and the application of the proceeds thereof and providing for other matters in connection therewith. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilwoman Black to open a public hearing. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. We're now in a public hearing to discuss summary ordinance 11,512. If there's anyone who wishes to come before the council to address this legislation, please come forward. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to close a public hearing. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black to approve. Councilwoman Brannigan. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ms. McConnell, would you explain what this legislation will accomplish? Yes, what we're looking to do on this one is, uh, this is to refinance our 2003 sales tax bonds. Uh, we currently have a balance of about 14 million on those bonds. They mature in 2018. Um, what we're looking to do is to refund those with a 20-year bond issue, which means we extend our debt an additional 15 years. We will lower our interest rate an estimated 1.1 percent, and by the lower interest, by getting the lower interest rate, and by going out for an additional 15 years, we're looking to get about 29 million dollars to do uh, major capital projects in the city. Um, we're comfortable doing this because our debt ratios are low. You know, our debt per capita right now is about 1361, uh, based on standard and force criteria between 1,000 and 2,000 is in the low category. Even if we do the refinancing and increase our debt by 29 million, our debt per capita would be about a little over 1,800, which we'd still be in the low category. Uh, the, the amount we pay stays the same, 3.2 million a year, so there's no tax increase involved, and it allows us to get the money to, to do needed projects. You know, we've got to do something to get our economy moving. Uh, you know, we're in a situation where our revenues are not growing, our expenses are like everybody else, and we've got to do something to get some, some additional revenue in the city, and uh, we think that these projects uh, will do that, and we, we feel we're in a good position to do it because our debt ratios are low. I'll also point out that, you know, we pay between six and seven million dollars a year off in debt um, through our normal process, budget process, so we're paying down debt pretty good, uh, so even though we issue an additional debt within Within four to five years, our debt ratios will be back to where they are today because of the amount of debt we pay every year. So uh, we feel we're in a good position to do this. The rates are low. Uh, we need to do something to, uh, to spur uh, the economy uh, in the city, and we think this is what we need to do. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Um, well, we've had several listening sessions and uh, talked about what the plan is, um, and we've heard a lot of uh, questions that were very good questions. Um, I, no, I was, I'm surprised that nobody came up and spoke during the public um, hearing because I, I assumed that we would um, hear the, the comments that were still lingering in the hearts and minds of people, both for and against uh, what, what we're intending to do. 
But I just want to say a few things. First of all, I want to thank um, Mr. Tony Leegee. First of all, it's wonderful to see you as an active citizen of our community. Not that you weren't before, but I mean, you know, this is, it's great that you've, you've uh, committed yourselves to continuing to uh, try to make a difference in our community. A lot of times people will stop their service and want to take a little bit of time off, um, but we're glad that the wind is still beneath your wings because it means a lot to us for somebody who we all have such respect for um, to know your position and hear your position on, on uh, such an important matter to so many in our city. So thank you so much for your continued service um, and for uh, coming here this evening and, and reaching out individually to let us know um, what was in your mind and, and on your heart. Um, but I wanted to speak to a couple of things that Mr. McConnell had said and also uh, speak, if I can, um, and, and I know our council chairman will stop me when uh, my time is up, but I think these things are important to say because whether or not they've been said before, I think people really need to be able to trust that what we're saying is what we're going to do. Um, I had a conversation with somebody today and um, still felt like they um, thought that we were moving rather quickly on this. Now, I'm going to speak later about all the road improvements, but I'm just going to make a point. We had a lot of uh, public hearings. We had a meeting that you could come and find out what road projects were going to be going on. Mr. Jose Gonzalez warned us at every meeting that there's going to be a lot of inconveniences and people are going to be complaining, blah, 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 blah. Nobody said a word until the cones were out and it was a reality. So I think that it does take a little bit of time um, while we've been talking about this for an awful long time, until it became a reality that something was going to happen, that we saw as much concern and as many questions and as, as much dialogue as needed to happen um, to get to the point where everybody felt comfortable. And so while there are still some people, I think, that are concerned, I would say we're not moving too fast. We have spent, the mayor has spent, the Economic Development Committee has spent, and other people, anybody who had listened to us as we talked about this process over time, has spent an awfully, awful long time to get to this point. And while you may just feel like you're being engaged, there's been opportunities, and whether or not you've used those opportunities or didn't know about those opportunities, it's not too late for you to still have a voice. Because what I tried to explain was, we all agree, even the people who are a little worried about what we may spend the money on, we all agree that we have to do something. We have to invest in our community for other people to want to invest in our community. And it's, it's fearful when you start talking about spending somebody's money. But I will tell you, Kenner is not unique in its challenges. Kenner is a community that used to be um, a, a suburb of the city of New Orleans where people flocked to whether it was a flight, whether it was a choice, whether it was just a way of life, it was like other communities around major cities, a place that people moved to to raise their families. We have seen a trend nationwide, not just here in Kenner, but nationwide where communities outside of the cities are struggling because this younger generation, um, for one, is flocking back to the city. Why? Because they want, they have less time than we ever had in our lives. And so they want to be closer to the action. They want to not be as far away from the things that are important to their families. They're not willing to do the drives and the commutes um, to be in neighborhoods outside of the city. They love diversity. They want more diversity. It's a very good thing that the, all these things are happening. Uh, people my age are selling their homes in the suburbs. Their kids are grown. They're flocking back to the city because there's a lot of things going on. They can be closer to the action. So it's not unique in that we're losing population. But what would be a crime and what would be sad is if we did stood still and did nothing about it. We have to be able to offer to these people who may now be looking and saying, gee, I can get more from my money if I give this up. We have to be that option. And I will tell you, the pendulum always swings in life, whether it's in real estate or whether it's in any other uh, thing in life, the pendulum swings. And we want to be where they swing back to. So we have to, and if we're not willing to commit ourselves to our own community, why on earth would any business want to commit themselves to our community? 
Economic development is putting your, posturing yourself to attract the best and the prettiest. We, we, I get so tired of hearing them say, why, am, why aren't y'all doing anything about the Esplanade Mall? Well, because nobody is demanding that things be done there. And by demanding, that means spending their money in ways that are going to attract those people who are looking to make money. So it is a process, people, and it is something that needs to happen or just expect more of the same because we can't do it with, we can't do something different with the same, with the, we can't have a different result with the same input. So we either need to be progressive, think outside the box, and do something to move the city forward, or we need to be happy with where we are. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Appreciate all those comments. Councilwoman DeFrancis, you have the floor. Thank you, Council President. I just want to add a couple of points to uh, what Councilwoman Brannigan said. First of all, let's remember again that the refinancing of these bonds, the money that we'll be paying for these bonds will come from sales tax. It will not be coming from additional property taxes or any other kind of taxes, simply from the existing sales tax. Right now, one third of one cent of the sales tax collected that goes to the city, the portion that comes to the city of Kenner is paying for the existing bonds. We are paying $3.2 million a year as stated. We will be paying the $3.2 million for the next five years, even if we do nothing. That money will still have to be repaid. We will still be paying only $3.2 million a year if we refinance the bonds and extend them for an additional 15 years for a total of 20 years. In other words, for the remaining 15 years, each of those years, this amount will still remain the same, $3.2 million per year. Let's also remember that inflation is coming in. So the dollars we're getting now up front are, are worth a lot more than the dollars we're going to be using to pay back those bonds. That's also something that I think sometimes we forget. And believe me, with Obamacare and a lot of the other things going on, I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent, but simply saying that inflation has to continue to rise. Also, I want to point out that there are infrastructure um, projects there as well as a lot of beautification projects, and those projects are not written in stone. We still have the ability to change some of those projects with input from you, the people. So they're not written in stone. We do have that right. They are not written, the projects are not written into the bonds. They are not, therefore they are flexible. But we want to make sure that we move forward in this city. As, Ms. As Councilwoman Brannigan said, stagnation is not an option. We have to do something. And therefore, the only way we can do it is to take a proactive approach. And this is the city of Kenner, this is the council, this is the administration working together to take a proactive approach. Let me mention to you also that Councilman Dinopoulos and Councilman Reno and myself have been going to all the economic development meetings. We chose to go there because we wanted to know what proposals were being put on the table to help the city of Kenner move forward. We listen to all the proposals, we listen to the ideas, and I can tell you, speaking for myself, I attended, I can't tell you how many civic organization meetings, garden club meetings every month, spoke to people in restaurants, spoke to people when I was food shopping. I've been talking about these projects all along. I've been talking about refinancing these bonds. This has not happened in a vacuum. And then we had two more town hall meetings to make sure that people knew exactly what was being proposed. So I want to again point out that this did not happen all at once. It has been a project that's been moving step by step by step forward. And again, one final note, again, we are not increasing taxes, not property taxes. We're not even increasing sales tax, um, our sales tax. All we're doing is taking the same one-third of one cent to pay for these bonds, and we'll continue to do that. And the benefit of it, the people benefit, the city benefits. Hopefully, we will be attracting that, that those young families that need to come to Kenner because it's a great place to live. It's a safe place to live. It's where I raise my children, and I'm hoping maybe my children will raise theirs here. Thank you, but Mr. Francis. But it's not going to happen if we don't move together. Appreciate your comments. Councilman Dinopoulos. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, Councilman Moreno and I were sitting down talking, and I said, what, you know, how can I relate this to, to my constituents in my district, and how can you see this visually, what's going to happen? What happened tonight if you go home? 
you drive your car home, you still have your credit cards in your wallet, you still have the same money that you started that day in your wallet, and you went home. And you close your eyes, and the next day you drive out of your neighborhoods and see all of these improvements, and it didn't cost you another dime. You still have the same money you have in your wallet. It would be, a, it would be an eye-opening experience to see all that. It'd be a miracle. Okay. Anyway, and, and let me tell you something. As, as Councilwoman um, uh, Brannigan said, yeah, we are competing with New Orleans right now, but we can beat New Orleans. We have lower taxes. We have lower crime. We have fantastic recreation. We do have a lake town that's in Renaissance being rebuilt. We do have river town that's going to have an ambiance completely different and will attract people. And plus, we're going to have the I-10 I corridor that's going to be completed and come through Kenner. Kenner's going to be very accessible. We can compete with New Orleans. But the reason why people are going to New Orleans is because New Orleans is investing in its, in its neighborhoods, it's investing in its schools, its infrastructure. And that's what we're doing. That's the one element that we're missing is the investment in the beautification of this town. Now, we're doing $60 million worth of sewage improvements. We're doing some $30, $40 million worth of road work, you know, from a federal grant submerged road program. You know, we're doing four, five, six million million worth of grants improvements this year, okay? We're doing what we're, but you don't see those things. Those are underground. What people want to see is a visual city. I do a lot of traveling. I see a lot of cities that have a wow factor, and I see a lot of cities that have a woe factor, okay? And I can tell you, I don't stay in those towns, okay? I tell you, what town over the last 10 years that, is, that have, has completely turned my head is not only the city of Ocean Springs in Mississippi, because I've been going there for 12 years straight, okay, is the city of Tupelo, Mississippi. You ought to see what they're doing out there. It's unbelievable. It's not the armpit of Mississippi anymore, okay? It is an incredible, thriving community with new facilities going up everywhere. And let me tell you something, the people who live in District 1 and District 2, the biggest factor I see about this is, is that you don't have a suicide lane anymore on Williams Boulevard. That's what you have. That's what other states and other communities call it, is a suicide lane, an open middle lane that you can go and turn and, and into any facility that you want. That's called a suicide lane, okay? That's going to be eliminated in those districts. People ask me in, in District 5, I constantly put a lot of improvements in the University City area, okay? It's the gateway to District 5. I've done a lighting project out there that everybody's called my office at night and they see and say, man, can we have more of that? Well, with the budget that I have in District 5, I can't provide much more of that. But there's almost $4 million are coming to that area with these funds, okay? And that's the gateway to District 5. Um, plus, you have just the recent announcement of the, of the airport expanding to the north side. I mean, Kenner has all the ingredients right now. We just need to put our best foot forward. You have to trust us as elected officials that this is the right thing to do at the right time. Thank you, Mr. Denoff. Thank you. Well said. Councilman Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, if, if Councilwoman Brandinger doesn't mind, I think through her conversations, uh, I remember what she was trying to say is a uh, definition of insanity is to do something over and over again and to expect the same different results. So if you don't mind, I, that's what I got out of that. I thought that's where, where you were going, and, which is so true. And I think that is the case. That is the opinion of most people that I speak with. That is insanity to believe to do the same thing over and over to expect something different if you don't do anything different makes sense. And I think as elected officials, all of us have that opinion that there is something that we have to do as council people, as businessmen, as families, as educators. Everyone's on page with that. So I think we all agree to that. There are some different opinions how we get there, which I think is the contention between different people, different organizations, di different businessmen. You know, I, I want to say that all the people who have put in hard work, many of ours trying to do this, is admirable, and, and they would not do this if they did not believe that it was something to better the city of Kenner. So all their hard work, all the people like Mr. Leji as our state representative, now as a, as a private citizen, obviously because he care about it, 
and this is why he's here, this is why he's in this new position, and that is why he fought so hard for the people who he represented. But, you know, like I said, the, the, the opinion, the, if you believe it was enough information, not enough, as Councilman Brannigan said, that's, that's your opinion. I think we're past that. But I do believe that's my responsibility, and I always go into all of our civic meetings with the churches and the playgrounds, is not to go in or to lead with my opinion. I think I would be wrong to do that. It is my responsibility to go into the meeting, to get as much information as I can before I get there, and to first lay out the facts to the citizens who I'm represent. Once that is done and listen to the conversation, if someone asks me, I will obviously give them my opinion, but I never go in with a decision made because I, I once heard somewhere, if you go in and make a decision right away, you divide immediately. And I think if for anyone to do that, that's exactly what happens. So I go in first, put the information out there, listen to the people, if they ask my opinion, I give it, and I think that's what I've done for the people within District 1 for the, the number of people, for the churches and the civic organization that I've met with. Uh, I think we have a lot of good ideas with what we want to do here. I think the challenge, not only in Canada, but like it is for the entire country, is we all want something. If we could get it for free, like Councilman Dinopolis said, we want it for free, but nothing comes for free. The challenge is how do we get it, how do we pay less for it, and how, do we get, how, how long does it take for us to get it without putting ourselves, our children, our grandchildren in death? That is the question. That is what we have to do. And I think that's where it lies within myself as part of the plan that's been presented so far. Uh, most of the people that I spoke with within District 1, they are for it to a certain extent. Some, some against it. But, but a lot, if I had to put it into a, into a summary, most of the responses were that we are going about this from the outside in approach as opposed from the inside out. And that's a respectful opinion that I have to take from the people who I'm represent. You know, it makes sense. And, and I kind of agree with that somewhat, what they want to say. Also, you know, they care about the city, not only for the next 20 years, but the next 30 or 40. Uh, people have different opinion. And I've gotten emails from both sides. One of the ones that really stuck to my claw, that really got me, was because District 1, you don't want to do this and do that. Let me remind everyone that the city of Kenner started in District 1. Prior to 1950, the citizens of District 1 made it possible to have the Esplanade Mall, the Walmart, and everything that you see north of airline or veterans, it has become, it is from the taxpayers, the sweat, the hard work from District 1. So District 1 has involved in this project or any project as anyone. And please, you know, I, that kind of got to my claw, but District 1 is part of the city and you can never erase that. So that's, I'm getting off of that. But also, you know, we want to see long term. We want to see things, uh, the plan as it, it relates to the economic development. We want to see as it relates to the services, the equipment of our city. We want to see our police department. We want to see the fire department. We want to see the infrastructure. But we, we want to see something more that we can be proud and leave as a legacy for our children and grandchildren. That is the conversation that I've been having with people. Not anything negative or anything like that, but that is the conversation. That is some of the concerns that we have going into this. So, you know, without saying anything else, you know, I appreciate all the hard work of all the businessmen, all the community, all the councilmen, and we all will be together at the end of the day, whatever happens here, and go forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilman Carroll. Councilman Reno. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the mayor, the Economic Development Committee, uh, people that serve on that committee. It's been a lot of work that's gone into this. This is not something that just was developed last night. It's over two years. And, uh, you know, I've been talking about it to my constituents in my district. Um, I had coffees at my house. Uh, in fact, the mayor attended one of them. And, you know, we talked about all of the different projects and the plans at uh, civic association meetings. And I know that everybody in my district is not in favor of this. There are a few that aren't, that, you know, that just don't want to see it at all. The majority of the people do want to see it. And I was elected to represent the people of District 3. And I'm going to vote for this because the majority of the people of District 3 want that. And I believe that that's the way it should be. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reno. 
Councilman Stagney. Thank you, Madam President. I was one of those councilmen at the uh, last meeting that thanked the mayor, the Economic Development Committee for taking two years to develop uh, what seemed to be a very good plan uh, and put a financing package together. Uh, during the meetings that I did have, I don't think anybody could say that I didn't like any of the projects. In fact, I, I, I added to it by stating we needed something on the main entrance to the mall, which is 32nd Street, the entrance into the city on West Napoleon, and, and possibly something on Roosevelt Boulevard, which I've done some beautification on there on 21st Street. But I, I did say then that I would, once everything got to the council, that I wanted my district uh, to be engaged so I knew what their thoughts were. And I, to the best of my ability, I did that. I, I didn't have enough time to do a survey to every citizen in the district. I will tell you just from the articles that went out, I had more negative calls than positive calls. But when I would call those residents back, there was a lot of misinformation in their comments to me. So I uh, asked Mr. Henry Shane, then went to the mayor and, and asked for a meeting here in City Hall. And I mailed almost everyone in the district. I did a voice call. And I think there were 60 people here, and that was from all over the city. M most of them were from District 2. I was somewhat disappointed in the turnout. But of those people who came and saw the presentation, most of them like what they saw. And they knew that you're paying a price on this. I don't want to sugarcoat it. If, if you were to pay down the debt that you have over the next five years and just take the 3.2 million in, you know, or, or up to 2033, you're gonna be able to spend as a city between 64 and $65 million. But if you do what we're trying to do by refinancing, pay it down, and then go out for debt again, you know, we're going to spend the upwards of $17 million in interest to pay for these projects. The problem, it's going to take an awful long time to make this city look the way it needs to look and the way it deserves to look. So I'm going to vote for this because I think it's in the best interest of our city. And hopefully what we do will spur development. What we do makes it more safe. Mr. Danapolis said earlier, it's a district I represent on Williams Boulevard. There's been at least two deaths of people uh, in the suicide lanes and even trying to walk across there. You know, one of the things I was a big advocate of is crosswalks, pedestrian walkways. You know, all of that is in this plan. If we can get this done over the next three to four years, I do think it will transform what our city looks like. So I'll be supporting this. I do have one question, because I don't understand something in here, Mr. McConnell, on the last whereas. Explain to me what that means about ne never exceed the 75% of the proceeds of the sales tax revenues. The, um, the sales tax that are dedicated to this are two half cent sales taxes. And um, what that means is the, the, uh, the debt service can't be more than a percentage of the revenue that, that those sales taxes generate. But as, as we've said before, those sales taxes generate almost $11 million. Which right. What I was getting at, the, you, about one-third of what, all what we get is right. what would go. And this is, that's 30-something percent. This is 75. Am I not understanding that? I'd have to ask the bond attorney. That's, an, that's, a, that's, that's a, a high point. figure, and I don't know if that's just canned language. Uh, I guess I didn't mean well, to bring that one up, huh? Ken, I'm sorry, I, that, that caught my eye when I was Absolutely. sitting up great here. Great question, great pickup. That is actually state law, that you cannot issue sales tax bonds that exceed 75% of your current sales tax revenue. And we don't expect to come Absolutely anywhere not. near that. You just Absolutely put that not. in because that was that That's was state law. Lane. You have okay. to. Have All right. If we don't have that, we don't, we don't apply to the state law. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Stagney. I just want to uh, just make my comments brief because a lot has been said. You know, I've lived in the city all my life. I was, I was raised here, uh, as well as my father before me. I've seen this city go from 5,000 to 17,000 to 27,000, and then all of a sudden we were at 60,000 with a, a speculation of full growth at 90,000. We are a bedroom community. There's no doubt about that. 
but I cannot in good conscience, knowing that I'm gonna be here for the next, hopefully next 20 years, uh, I'll be an octogenarian by then, but anyway, uh, I, wanna, I wanna see this city improve. We see other cities doing so much with their, their monies at, to make it more, more attractive. And Ocean Springs was a great uh, city to give us an example of, because I've been there when I was a little girl, and we'd go to the Dude Ranch there, and it was just a little hick town. And what they have done with their beautification and, and um, progress in that city has been unbelievable. It makes you a city where you say, oh, I'd like to live here. Um, we are going to, make sure that these, these projects, and I wanna discuss that even though I know tonight is not the night to discuss these projects, some people have mentioned to me, well, you know us in the, in the um, preview that we saw, there were no uh, overhead uh, power poles. I'd, I asked about that. I'd like to look in to see what the cost would be in, rem in putting underground lighting, particularly on Williams Boulevard. We can start at a certain area from maybe veterans and go to the lake, but I think it's something we need to look into because that would make our city so much more attractive. I'd love to be able to say, let's fill in the canal banks from, from Power Boulevard to Chateau. I know all of these things are outrageous costs that we have to look into. So I don't know if all of those things are gonna be included, but we are gonna do the most essential things that we need to do. That's to beautify this city, do with the in necessary infrastructure, remove anything that's hazardous, such as the suicide lane. There's no cost to the taxpayer, to, to the population, no additional taxes. How could we not approve something like this? We are investing in our city for the next 20 years. We are taking some of the monies that are going to be, um, be uh, subscribed to by in the next five years and we're going to extend that. This city is going to move forward with progressive thinking, but we are always conservative. We've always been. Since 1995, with the, the gaming revenues, we've been paying down the debt, in some cases, to a million dollars a year. So we're constantly paying down the debt. It's not something that we're gonna have to live with for, for the rest of our lives. Uh, it's, it's something that's gonna be done to make this city a worthwhile place to live. When you go into Old Metairie, and you look at Old Metairie, gee, what is it about Old Metairie? It's clean, it's the beautiful trees, it's a nice uh, neighborhoods to live in. That's what we wanna make Kenner. We wanna make it appealing to all of our citizens. We wanna make it a beautiful place to live. We wanna have all of the conveniences. But in order to do that, we have to have incentives to bring people back here and, and to have businesses come back. This is what we're trying. We're doing everything we can to try and improve this city at no taxpayer's cost. This is the way to go. And so um, I can't imagine why anyone would not want to see our city improve. I don't, I, we just can't keep going on and think that everything's gonna remain status quo and think that things are just gonna happen automatically. We're gonna make sure that we provide the necessary funding. And I do wanna ask one question, um, Mayor and Mr. Quigley and Mr. Ms. Deany. This money cannot be given to the police department or anything else. This has to be spent on capital monies only for improvements to our city. That's correct. So in no way, it's like it's all de dedicated. It has to be spent on capital. It, it's not gonna cost taxpayers a single penny. And it's going to make our city more beautiful and in, in, in our environment more beautiful. But I wanna make sure that we're, this, this council is involved in all of the, the activities that are gonna be going up. For instance, when we put our landscaping, I don't wanna see any scrub trees. I wanna see some nice landscaping. I wanna see some durable landscaping. I wanna see some oak trees. I don't wanna see things that are gonna be dying in, in the next five or six years. I want something that are fast growers. I'd like to be able to say that we have something substantial that will last through the years. So this council is going to be monitoring all of the, all of the uh, projects that are gonna be done. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of say-so, which means that we have a lot of say-so from our citizens. So. Of course we're gonna support it, and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that our council is standing united here, because at one time I didn't think we were united, but now I think we are. So I, I'm gonna let Ms. Brannigan close, and then we'll take the vote. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I know we all mentioned the Economic Development Committee, and we 
singled out Mr. Leegee because he was brave enough to come up and talk, but I also want to thank those business groups who stood with us, um, the chambers, the business groups, the JEDCOs, all of those who um, we look to for uh, leadership in these types of issues. So for everyone to be on the same page and to hear from the Mr. Murphys and, and I don't even want to start naming names, but from, uh, I'm looking around, there's so many people in this audience who I'm so pleased um, to be, that they're standing with us um, on this issue. And usually you wait until we cross paths at a cocktail party to give us a thumbs up and a thumbs down, but this was too important, so thank you for being here. Um, two points I want to make just in closing. Uh, one, uh, somebody had mentioned to me, you know, why aren't we doing it this way? And what I try to explain to people about government is that you cannot, we try to be as business-minded in government as we can be, as the law allows for. But you cannot run government like a business because a business would be able to make decisions unilaterally, unilaterally on their own and spend money and make decisions uh, that affect other people without any input. A government has to have a process in place. And when we sometimes get frustrated, you'll hear Councilmember Black talk a lot about nobody wants to bid on anything in our city and it costs us more money to do business because these laws were put in place to protect us so that we're not having patronage and we're not giving away things, but they, these laws are here. And sometimes it costs us more to do business, but what would cost us more is if we were not transparent and we did not follow processes to get to, to accomplish things. So that's number one, is that while we try to be as business-minded as we can, you can't always do it in the process that a business has the luxury of doing it. And number two, I'm very excited that we are now fighting over projects because everybody has passions for different things, whether it's, um, I'm, I'm not, look, I'm gonna tell you a secret if you don't already know it, I am, very frugal. So things like petunias and, and pansies aren't the things that appeal to me because I feel like they're just gonna die. But concrete does and, and sprinkler systems and trees and those kind of things get me excited. And believe it or not, um, while most people don't like sewer projects, I've happened to find that those are those sexy projects that we talk about so often and are unable to fund. So what I'm saying is that everybody has mentioned something that's important to them or that they have dreamed about or that they, uh, you know, living in the city or that now that this opportunity has opened itself up to us that we can only dream further. So that is, wow, I'm so happy that we're at the place where we all now are, are making known what projects would be important to us. So that's what I meant to say early in my earlier comments, that it's not too late for you to have a voice. There's something that you feel passionately about, you love petunias, and you wanna see a lot of gardens, then you need to let us know that. So we're fighting for the things that are important to you. But all of this has just been a principle that we're now all on the same page that this needs to happen. And what it looks like is yet to come. So I always say the best is yet to come, and I say that now. Uh, what it looks like is yet to come. So the best truly is yet to come. So thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman Brannigan. And I think we have an amendment, yes, Council Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have an amendment, the 12th, whereas um, the 2012 sales tax number, the first blank is going to be ten million six hundred and forty-three thousand five hundred and twenty-six dollars, and the future estimate in the second blank is going to be ten million five hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. Um, on the amendment, does everybody understand that motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilwoman Black? On the amendment, uh, is there anyone, Councilman Bran Councilman Stagney? You had the floor on the amendment. Thank you, Madam President. In the beginning of the whereas, it says the, the governing authority has investigated this and come up with this figure. Would it be more appropriate to say that the uh, uh, director of finance provided that to us? Uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, I want to ask our bond attorney if that makes any difference. Bill Beck now, 3445 North Causeway Boulevard. Would you repeat that, Mr. Stagney, exactly what it, changed? The whereas says the go this governing authority has investigated the operating history, and it goes on to say several other things, and then the figures that we are going to amend, uh, the 10 million, give some change each way, 
it was provided to us by the finance director, and I was wondering if it would be appropriate if we could put that uh, the finance director has investigated the operations history and put his name in as opposed to go governing authority. I, I would prefer to say the finance director of the issuer, which That's is fine. That's fine. That, that amendment would be okay, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so um, everybody clear? Would you please restate the, the entire amendment uh, as it's supposed to be voted on, Natalie? Yes, it will s simply state, whereas the finance director of the issue. The issue issuer. Of issuer. The issuer um, in the beginning of the whereas, and then the amounts will be as stated earlier. Okay, thank you. Please vote on the amendment. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. On the legislation as a whole, uh, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 6-1. Council Member Carroll is opposed. Okay, I take back my unity statement. <laughs> I thought it was going to be fully realized, the importance. Thank you. Um, next move, please. <laughs> Item 10 is opening of bids. We have none. Item 11 is reclassification of zoning. We have none. Item 12 is other ordinances for final passage. Item 12A is summary ordinance number 11,518. An ordinance amending ordinance 9554 regarding athletic facility booking policies. Okay, we uh, we have a motion to uh, for one meeting deferral by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black. Uh, so please, excuse me. Uh, what, this was your legislation, Mr. Carroll. Okay, um, def Please replace that. The Councilman uh, def, um, Carroll, by, second by Councilman uh, Brannigan, on a, on a one meeting deferral. Yes, ma'am. Can't, did you vote, dear? No. Madam Chairman, motion passes. Madam Thank Chairman, you, motion passes 7-0 for a one meeting deferral. Item 13 is resolutions and motions by council members. Item 13A is a resolution requesting that Jefferson Parish move polling place K-004 from its current location at 64 Andrus Avenue to Gladys Playground Gym located at number two Nassau Avenue. Motion by Councilman Reno, second by Councilman um, Black. Councilman Reno, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, this is a little housekeeping, I guess, on my part. Um, I, I originally had asked for a resolution to move this to um, Driftwood Park Country Club. And uh, I received uh, some information from Mr. Uh, Gandolfi with Jefferson Parish and Brian Freeze with the Clerk of Court's office um, had said that uh, the country club, uh, he ex expressed doubts that it wouldn't meet ADA standards. So I asked them to maybe move it to Schneckenberger School, and that came back saying that they had three polling places there. They really wanted in a public building. So the end result um, is that they suggested that we move this polling place 4K to Gladys Playground. So basically I'm just putting up a resolution so that we fall in line with that. And Thank, that's it. Thank you, Thank Councilman Reno. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 13B is a resolution affirming that it is the policy of the city of Kenner to provide within constitutional limit limitations for fair housing throughout the city and officially acknowledge April as Fair Housing Month. Motion by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black. 
Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 14 is items removed from the consent agenda. We have none. Item 15 is acceptance of contracts and similar matters approved by the mayor. Item 15A is summary ordinance number 11,513. An ordinance accepting the lowest bid received from Semsco Incorporated for a two-year contract not to exceed $100,000 per year to supply PVC pipe and fittings for the City of Kenner on an as-needed basis for the City of Kenner. Motion by Councilman Reno, second by Councilwoman DeFrancis. Councilman Reno, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to um, amend this and add a section four. Um, and in that section four, uh, if the mayor um, executes a renewal as allowed by the contract, said removal must be ratified by a majority vote of the council. And I wanted to add that because in the, um, the contract, it states that the mayor can, um, you know, renew this contract for, uh, you know, another term, and the contract is for five years. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought somebody seconded it. Yes, he did. Okay. A motion by Councilman Reno, second by Councilman Stagney. Um, you do realize anything over $100,000 has to come before the council anyway, but you just want to make sure that that is put in I the legislation. So, so um, 15B. 15A, we're on I mean, 15. 15A, no. No, we're on 15A, not 15A. Oh, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. I am so sorry. Well, <laughs> I don't have an amendment for that. Okay. I got ahead so, of myself. I'm sorry. So on 15A, in regards to the pipe, a contract not to exceed a hundred thousand dollars that there's I need no take, amendment. I need to take that off. I, I, it's been a frustrating night, Mr. <laughs> Reno. I, I kind of know how you feel. I Thank apologize. You. Everybody makes mistakes. Um, okay, please vote on the original legislation. Yes. We need a screen to vote, please. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15B is summary ordinance number 11,514, an ordinance ratifying the agreement with SMG to provide management services for the Punch Train Convention and Civic Center. Motion by Councilman Reno, second by Councilwoman Black. Councilman Reno. Thank you, sorry about that. So <laughs> this is the one that I wanna amend and I apologize again, and add section four. And do I need to read it again or? Okay. Uh, if the mayor uh, executes a renewal as allowed by the contract, said removal must be ratified by a majority vote of the council. Okay. I said, re re oh, I'm sorry, renewal, re not removal. Would Sorry. you repeat that amendment, I'll, I'll please, so everybody's on the same page? If the mayor executes a renewal as allowed by the contract, said renewal must be ratified by a majority vote of the council. Okay. Okay. Motion by, uh, on an amendment by Councilman Reno, second by Councilman Dinopoulos. Um, I'd just like to ask, uh, explanation, a reason for the deferral, if, if you don't mind. The, the, I mean, not deferral, amendment. The, the amendment. The, yeah, see, we're all confused tonight. The, the only reason that I wanted to put that in is because the contract just states that the mayor can renew it, and it's got a five-year term, and it can be renewed for another five years. However, we have a charter change that says everything has to come in front of the council. I just wanted to make sure that it was in there. Okay. So that motion, that, that amendment motion is by Councilman Reno, second by Councilman Dinopoulos. On the amendment, did you wish to speak, Mr. Dinopoulos? And, and Madam Chair, you know, once again, um, when uh, Councilman Reno and I were in meeting with the administration, I mean, it's always good government, you know, when you have a contract that can actually be extended to 10 years, 
I mean, the makeup of this council could be completely differently. And, and, you know, I just would like to have them, whoever's on the council, to be able to look at it and make those decisions as well. So when we're talking about a contract that has a five-year contract with a five-year renewal, I think it's, it, 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 it's a good amendment, uh, Councilman Reno, that, that this is on there. And it just, it just solidifies the fact, and I know the, council, the, the contract's over 100000 but also solidifies the fact that it will come before this council once again in five years. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we need to say that amendment was made by Councilman Reno, so those whomever's here will know who made it. <laughs> okay, Councilman Stagner, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I, I too will support this. This is a good government amendment. This uh, contract out uh, uh, goes longer than the term of anybody up here and anybody down there. And uh, you know they may well look at uh, after the first term putting it back out. So we did do a charter amendment that the the people of our city voted on and they wanted us to disclose to them before contracts are signed how much we're spending on them. So I think this is a good amendment and I'll be supporting it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Please vote on the amendment. <laughs> Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0 to amend. And on the legislation, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15C is Summary Ordinance Number 11,515, an ordinance ratifying an engineering agreement with Hartman Engineering Incorporated Consultant for professional engineering services associated with the design and construction administration of improvements to the Kenner Hanson City Sewer Lift Station Numbers 4102 and 4103, Task Number 1, and design slash construction administration of a new force main extension from lift station number 4103 to lift station number 4106, 10th and Maria, task number two, for a total fee number, for, for a total fee of $2,004,515, council district numbers one and two. Motion by Councilman Carroll, second by Councilman Stagney. Hearing no discussion, please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15D is summary ordinance number 11,516, an ordinance ratifying proposals from AMRISC LP with certain underwriters at Lloyd's of London, Indian Harbor Insurance Company, QBE Specialty Insurance Company, Steadfast Insurance Company for commercial property insurance at a cost not to exceed $423,150 from Landmark American Insurance Company for the excess property insurance at a cost not to exceed $115,500 for the period of June 1st, 2013 through June 1st, 2014. Motion by Councilwoman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 7-0. Item 15E is summary ordinance number 11,517, an ordinance ratifying the United Healthcare Policy and Rates for health insurance coverage for the city of Kenner, employees, retirees, dependents for the fiscal year July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014 as set forth in their proposal. Motion by Councilman Black, second by Councilwoman Brannigan. Would the administration please give us the, the changes that are being made for the employees this year? Because I'm told that um, every year we keep cutting our um, coverages, but I know there's an explanation, so I'd like to hear it. Yes. Um, currently, the, during the current year, the one we're in right now, we actually have two plans, one which we call the base plan and the other one which is the option plan, which employees can, can pay from, essentially from their own pockets for themselves and or their, uh, their families. So um, that is currently what is in, in effect. Um, we are 
agents went to United, that's with United Healthcare. Our, eight, our uh, agents went to United Healthcare and asked if, uh, if we had the same plan, what the uh, premiums would be for this year. And initially, um, the increase would be 12.85%, uh, which uh, equates to about, which, which is, which is about $500,000 a year increase for the city for premiums because we pay the premiums for all employees by 100%. So they negotiated with the, uh, the insurance company, United Healthcare, and they were able to get it down to 9.9%, but they couldn't go down any further in, than that. And that is about, full, about a $400,000 increase to, to the premiums for the, uh, for the city. So we told them that because of the tight budget that we're getting ready to experience for next year, that we wanted them to go back to the insurance company and come up with a plan where we would have um, the same premium so it wouldn't cost the city anything. So essentially what they told us was that having two different plans was creating a huge problem uh, in terms of, of the uh, premium. Uh, right off the top, there's an additional 2% because of the fact that they have to administer two programs. And the uh, actually, the buy-up plan had a great deal of experience. They had 98%. At this point in time, and the year's not even over with, they're already up to 98% experience. And of course, your premiums are based on the, the experience or the use of, of the policy. So uh, they told us that we really can't sustain having two different plans. So they recommended that we only have one plan. So uh, we're, propo we're proposing to just to have one plan, and the uh, the the one the one plan would would help us in terms of trying to keep the uh, the premiums. Now, so this year we're only going to have one plan. Now, the b one big change we're going to have, and I think which is going to benefit the employees, and we've asked for this. There's been a lot of clamoring this for many years, is we're going into tiers. Uh, for many, many years, we've only had two tiers. The one tier was the employee only, and then it was just employee and, and the whole family. So now we're going to be able to break it into two tiers, four tiers. So now if an employee wants to just add their spouse, there'll be one cost, and it's significantly cheaper than just the family cost. If they want to have the, the employee and just their ch child or children, that will be another cost which is significantly lower. And of course, we'll also offer the family plan. So in actuality, most employees that were paying anything last year will, will find that um, it, their, their premium will go down. The only group that it would not go down was be those in the base plan that had their family. And that was only, we only had 21 employees out of the possible 700 that were even taken, that were even doing that. And we suspect some of those still may be able to just go spouse only or children only. So, um, so we, the good news is that when we get to the budget, the proposal that you have in front of you tonight is stand still in terms of what the city is going to pay. So the city will not find have to pay any additional money. The employees, again, you know, we're proposing that the, the, that we're still paying for the employees. And that those that are paying some type of premium will see that something go down. Now, granted that the new plan is not as, as, as say, as rich or as beneficial as the old plan, but we still think, we still think it's a very good plan. Um, you know, we felt like we had a very rich plan before, and we still think we have a very good plan for our employees. Thank you, Mr. Quigley. Um, as you know, health insurance costs keeps rising every single year, and um, it's, it's unfortunate that we, it's come to, to where you have to start minimizing on exactly, you know, what, what you uh, can pay and, and what can be utilized from the, from the health plan. But uh, I'm sure that we've had some extensive studies. I know Mr. Um, Murphy, was it Todd? Todd, um, no, no, Todd Thomas. Uh, actually, tonight, yes. We, we have... Um, Acacia Financial Acacia Financial Group is our um, I don't know, well Acacia is our agent of record, and then uh, Sigma Consulting is our yes. advisors. And yes, we've worked very hard both with Acacia and Sigma in trying to come up with the best possible coverage, and uh, on behalf of the employees, and at the same time trying to 
um, keep the cost down for the city. Thanks. And again, it's very fortunate that we have the same cost as last year, and we think we still have a very good program for the employees. And just remember, the people who are voting on it and the people who, who the administration, we all have to live under this plan, so um, I'm sure that they did to the, the best of their to the best of their ability. Councilwoman Brannigan, did you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, one of the other full, uh, health insurances, you know, it's never going to get better, guys. I mean, we're just going to have to, as I talked to Mr. Quigley the other day, try to think of more creative ways to see if there's other uh, ways to approach our plan that, um, you know, either keeps the cost down, gives us more benefit, or um, gives us some responsibility in our health care. Um, we had talked about a plan that somebody had mentioned at one time that Auctioner does for their employees where they actually monitor certain things and wear pedometers and, you know, if they don't smoke, they get points and what have you. It's some sort of program that they set up um, to try to keep their health costs down and to create a more healthy environment. Um, so it's something that I think that we should at least explore in the future uh, that could perhaps save the city money and, and you know, provide better coverage for us, but who knows? I may be completely wrong. Um, Councilmember Reno said that his company uh, does a um, health uh, savings account, which is another approach to uh, health insurance. So wh what I'm saying is I know that if we keep going down the same route and doing the same thing, we're going to always have to spend more to get less, um, and that is evident here. Um, and the only, I think the people who this is going to help the most is going to be those with children, but also it's going to help the city because those people with children uh, may now put their children on our plan, which will make us have a, a healthier experience, if you will, at the end so that when we do have to go out and shop it, it will show that we are healthier than what we appear to be right now because part of our problem is that we have a very, um, we have a lot of sick people that have been on our plan as such, it raises our rates. As such, uh, people don't want to spend the money to put all of their family on it, so they use their spouse's insurance or get individual policies because it's cheaper. And so we don't have a lot of young people in our plan, and that doesn't necessarily mean employees, but it could mean their family. So that was one thing that this plan may encourage and may um, help us when we go shop it next year. But, I, you know, I just want to say that to the employees that it's not that we have not talked about other ways to provide health insurance that could uh, provide more coverage, provide more benefit um, at the same cost. I, I just think that we haven't fallen upon that thing which would do all of the above. But I did challenge the administration to make, you know, make certain that we at least include those types of plans or options in our search for next year. And I, I want to say, in all fairness to them and to uh, the people who shop this for us, this is the first year that this has to come before the council. And so we have a deadline of, of July 1 where our new plan has to start. So we are learning this year. It's a learning curve for us as to how far out in advance we have to get our numbers, our experience, our, our amount of participants together to shop out for plans to present to us to come before the council to get approval to be able to get it in place in time for the budget. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that we did anything other than what we've normally done and just tried to find a way to, to make this, you know, more palatable because we know health insurance is not a fun thing to, to talk about, but um, I think it's the best we could do under the circumstances of, of the health industry right now under the, the uh, you know, fear of when uh, the Obama plan comes around that, that you know, people still aren't certain how it's going to affect their health insurance and, and their cost and their rates. So um, uh, this is the best I think we could do under the circumstances. But I, I do hope that we'll be creative in the future and looking at other options starting now. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Brannigan. Council Clerk. We need to vote. Um, please vote. Um, Madam Chairman, let me please note that Councilmember Stagney will be abstaining. Please vote. Madam Chairman, motion passes 6-0. <laughs> I 
Item 16 is ordinances and resolutions in summary for first reading. Item 16A is an ordinance designating and renaming Lyons Field as Sal Playa Field. Item 16B is an ordinance increasing the maximum um, contract amount authorized by ordinance number 10,146 for the contract with New Arrow Industries Incorporated doing business as Arrow Fence for fencing to be installed at various facilities on an as-needed basis for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16C is an ordinance authorizing a contract with Elite Portable Restrooms and Showers Incorporated for the rental of portable toilets and associated cleaning services on an as-needed basis in an amount not to exceed $25,000 per year for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16D is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Audiovisual in Imagineering Incorporated in the amount of $42,000 to furnish and install spherical mirror projection system and graphics laptop computer for the Kenner Planetarium in accordance with seal bid number 13-6134 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16E is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Lumber Products Incorporated to supply building materials on an as-needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 13-6131 and an amount not to exceed $75,000 per year for the Department of Public Works. Item 16F is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from Task Force LLC in the amount of $288,415 for repairs at the Lake Town Fishing Pier in accordance with seal bid number 13-6130 for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Item 16G is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from New Light Electrical Wholesalers, LLC, for an annual contract to supply aluminum tapered and decorative street light poles on an as-needed basis in accordance with seal bid number 13-6135 and an amount not to exceed $25,000 per year for the Department of Public Works. Item 16H is an ordinance authorizing the administration to utilize the existing bid with Jefferson Parish Traffic Engineering with 3M Company as per contract number 55-12764 for reflective sheeting on an as-needed basis not to exceed $50,000 annually for a period concurrent with Jefferson Parish contract for the City of Kenner Department of Public Works. Item 16I is an ordinance approving a pawn shop in a C2 general commercial zoning district in a mixed-use commercial building located on lot 16A1, square 177, Briarwood Subdivision, Kenner, Louisiana. Item 16J is an ordinance accepting the responsive bid received from LAS Enterprises Incorporated in an amount not to in an amount of $53,954 to furnish and install motorized roll-down shutters for the Emergency Operations Center in accordance with seal bid number 13-6128. Item 16K is an ordinance amending section 3-22 of the Code of Ordinances regarding issuance of permits on a probationary period. Item 17 is reports from the Council and our special committees. We have none. Item 18 is new business that was taken earlier. Item 19 is unfinished business and a motion to reconsider or remove from a tabled position. We have none. Item 20 is persons wishing to address the council on special subject matters. Yes, we have a few. Uh, I know Mr. Larry Katz was here earlier, but I think he's gone. Mr. Jim Hudson signed in and he's, he's no longer here. I think that was in regards to the refinancing. Mr. Robert Miles, I know he's here. Do you wish to decline, Mr. Miles? Okay. Well, hearing no other discussion and no other, oh, Councilman, De, Councilman DeFranches, you had the floor. Thank you. Um, earlier in the meeting, I didn't get a chance to mention, um, I, I've attended quite a few funerals. Many of them were mentioned previously, but there were two others that I attended as well. Salvador Pardo, who is the, was the owner, I should say, of Stingrays died as well, and our condolences go to his family. And um, Teddy Solomon, who uh, was the father of George Solomon, um, who is the uh, 
theater developer that is building the theater at the Esplanade Mall. I attended that funeral as well, and his father died. And our condolences go to those families as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Natalie Newton. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the Kenner Volunteer Committee is um, seeking volunteers for Rivertown Cleanup Day this Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. Uh, they're going to work to clean up Rivertown. They're meeting at the LaSalle Landing parking lot, which is at the intersection of Williams and the River Levee. And also the planetarium is uh, holding Astronomy Day on Saturday, April 20th from 11 to 3. Okay, give us the time again on Saturday for the, the Rivertown. Event. Rivertown cleanup starts at 9 a.m. So all you have to do is just show up. Show up. Everything will be provided to help clean up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Newton. Councilman Dinopoulos. Ms. Newton, will you remove your cue, please? I got it. Go Councilman ahead. Councilman Dinopoulos, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this Saturday, the um, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton's Girl Scouts are doing a park cleanup at Seton Park. And I want to thank um, both the um, Public Works Department and the Recreation Department for chipping in some people and some manpower and materials that we're going to go ahead and brighten up the uh, little pocket park we have in Seton Park. And that's this Saturday. It starts at 9. We're going to have pizzas and hot dogs and things like that. So if any of y'all want to come out and help, we're going to pressure wash, paint, cut, edge, mulch, plant a couple oak trees that got donated by the Girl Scouts of America. Um, please come out and have a, you know, a little fun with us. We're going to have a blast. And also I want to um, also want to say that last night I was at the Pontchartrain Center. And what a terrific event. I want to go ahead and just commend um, the Jefferson Parish uh, School Board on the Dance Challenge. It's the Martin Marino 7th Annual Dance Challenge. I, I attended it last night, and I can tell you it was a packed performance. They had over 300 kids doing dances like the salsa, the waltz, and, and some other things that I couldn't even dance at. And um, very professionally done, very high tech. Um, what a wonderful event. And I want to thank the mayor and his council because we actually, um, for them to put this, pull this off, we actually give one of our city days to the Jefferson Parish School Board for them to hold this event. Um, it was just terrific. I mean, I'm telling you, we need to build a bigger Pontchartrain Center if this thing ever grows any more than it was. It was standing room only. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Councilman Reno. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that there is a, uh, a benefit uh, at the uh, Rivertown Theater. Um, Wynn Varble, who's a Nashville singer-songwriter, um, will be performing a show at doors open at 8 o'clock. Tickets in advance are $10, $15 at the door, and all proceeds will go to the renovation, the continued renovation of the Rivertown Theater. Thank and you, you can get tickets at, uh, at the theater's box office. Thank you, Councilman Reno. Uh, this Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Councilman Carroll. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to say that past Saturday, the uh, Buddy Lawson Playground for the five and six year olds and the 11 and 12 had a banquet for the basketball season. Uh, the coaches for the 11 and 12 is Mr. David Scott, Mr. Rico Weeks, the seven and eight, Mr. David Swilly, Mr. Uh, Reggie, and also Mr. Uh, I can't think of the third course name, but it was a nice event. All the parents participated, uh, the young men, five and six, up to 11 and 12, had a fantastic time. And it's a good good event when parents and grandparents come out to show their support for their children. We look forward to other events in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Councilman Brannigan. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I mentioned earlier that we are starting to get calls as a result of the road work that's going on. Um, you can go online and Believe me, there's signs everywhere that give you a phone number to call, a website to look at, a Facebook page to access. But you can go online at uh, www.pavingla.roads.com. And you can see every one of the projects, not just in Jefferson Parish, but anywhere, a projected 
time frame or it'll tell you that it should be finished when they start another project and you can reference that project to see when that's uh, expected to start. So if, if you have any questions about any of the projects that are going on, please access uh, that web page and, and you'll be able to get probably as much information as you're looking for. So it's all over the city. I mean, it's, it's great news. It's an inconvenience, but it's amazing how much uh, road work is going on in the city and Jefferson Parish and throughout Orleans. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Brannigan. Hearing no other discussion, we have a motion to adjourn by Councilman Brannigan, second by Councilman Black. Meetings adjourned.